Thank you, Linda, and thank you all for joining us today for ICPSR State of the Consortium. Thank you for participating in the data fair. This is a really um, exciting time for us. It's a really all hands on deck time for ICPSR, people from across the organization and from across the consortium um, that have been putting on things to, to talk to you about different aspects of the data resources and data um, and educational resources, statistical resources that we have for you. In the, in the next hour, I, together with Abe Israel and Kilt San Kim, two of our uh, great ICPSR employees, um, are going to talk to you and um, and and other talking, non-talking activities <laughs> uh, um, um, are, uh, about um, what's been going on at ICPSR. Um, we've been doing a lot, so we have a lot to tell you. Um, it's been a really exciting time at ICPSR, and we're really excited to, to share some of what we've been up to with you. Um, the first thing we want you to know is that our consortium is growing. As many of you know, we started off with 22 members in 1962. We are now up to 782 members. That is basically, it is virtually every research university in the United States. It is most of the um, liberal arts colleges and many other institutions of higher education um, throughout the United States. We have institutions across Canada, um, outside of North America, around the world. We are a global consortium, and we are, we are excited to have um, this growing membership. We also have a lot of members who are not institutions of higher education, statistical agencies, and think tanks, um, and they all benefit from um, what we share with one another in terms of our data resources and how we, we use and um, use data. So thank you all for joining. Let's keep going. Thanks to our great membership team, including Linda, who you just heard of, uh, heard from, um, who've been building our membership. Um, as you know, one of the things that we important things that the IC, that ICPSR does um, brings to shares with our consortium is our our training activities. Um, ICPSR summer program. Um, is a it the pre is a premier educational opportunity everywhere I go I meet people who tell me that they participated in the summer program and that it was an important experience often a turning point in their lives when they understood how they could use data and use empirical research in their careers um, and we're really proud of the impact that we've had um, in in training people from so many different communities. The summer program remains strong. It is now, uh, it is the premier part of the program are eight weeks to four week sessions here in Ann Arbor, but we now have locations um, around the world um, where, we, uh, where we have our training sessions. We have almost a thousand people participate in the ICPSR summer program every year, learning about um, new and old statistical techniques. Um, mostly these are people who are graduate students, but we also have faculty, both junior faculty, and sometimes quite senior faculty who want to learn about new things. And we even have some undergraduates um, who come and uh, participate in the summer program. And, um, and, and we have data librarians um, from, our, from our member institutions. Um, who come, people who are interested in data stewardship, um, who come and learn about that. And of course, we have our great uh, class for our ORs, our official representatives, um, every summer as well. So that the summer program is busy and growing and, and offering new opportunities, new kinds of training um, opportunities for our members. ICPSR um, is, is a data archive we ingest and make and preserve and make available to the research community an enormous amount of data that individuals and organizations have created over the last 60 years. We now have over 10,000 studies, um, which include over almost 80,000 data sets um, and that, are, that are, have been deposited here that we have preserved and that we make available to the research community. About 10% of those data sets are restricted, usually to protect the confidentiality 
of respondents to a survey or participants in a study. We make those data available to our members, to the research community, um, but we do with that in a way that is that protects the confidentiality of that data using an appropriate and secure computing platform and um, an appropriate um, uh, contractual me mechanisms to assure the security and the, 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 that we protect the confidentiality of that data. We'll talk to you more about other kinds of things that we're doing to protect the confidentiality of, that, of our data, um, both our public use data to protect its security and the confidential data that we have. Um, our data sets include over 5 million variables. Actually, they include a lot more variables than that, but, our, but 5 million of them um, are included in our social science variables database. And you can compare our studies examining these variables using um, the metadata that we have, that is to say the descriptions of the variables that we have in the social science variables database. You can use that to, to discover data sets that will be of interest to you. You can also use that if you're designing a study um, because those variables and the question texts are there for you to use. We also have over 75,000 data related publications. That is to say, these are publications that have um, that researchers have created um, and shared with the, world, the research world, the broader community. That and those are publications and analyses that use um, one of our 10,000 studies. Um, and our and each of those publications is associated with a study to both help you to understand the impact of the data that have been deposited at ICPSR and to help you to understand what data might be of interest to you. We know that oftentimes the best way to find a data set that's of interest to you for the question that you have is to look to see what data um, relevant um, related publications have used. So we include that as part of the search when you're looking for data um, here at ICPSR. ICPSR has over the past year been engaged in a strategic planning process. For those of you who know me, you know that the idea of doing a strategic planning process was perhaps not my favorite thing because I'm very <laughs> impatient and I like to do things, not talk about what we're going to do. But it has actually been incredibly important for us as an organization to engage in the strategic planning process to figure out what's really valuable about what we, what we have been doing for 60 years and that we want to keep doing. And what is it that we need to be doing that's new? We are in a data-rich, data-driven world. And what did that mean for, um, for, for our organization, for how it works, for the technology that we use? for how we interact with our, um, with our membership. Um, all of those were the questions that we addressed in our strategic planning process. And we are very proud that we think of as our, our strategic planning process. We're using our strategic plan as a living document to inform what we're doing here at ICPSR on a, data ba on a daily basis. Um, our strategic plan addresses four, if you like, key issues for ICPSR, innovation, um, the technology that we are using to share our data and to share our educational activities changes all the time, the data itself that people want to use, where it comes from, how they use it is changing. So we need to be innovative. We need to be thinking about how researchers are going to do their research in the future so that our platform is presenting um, data to them and data preventing, presenting people with the research resources that they're going to need for the future. We need to have an innovative attitude to do that. And the strategic plan addresses that. At the same time, we need to make security absolutely paramount. We all know that it, it's a data-rich world, but there's a lot of data out there about us individually that we want to be secure, and we need to be, uh, um, again, thinking in a forward way about what the potential risks are and how we manage to keep making data available for research purposes while protecting um, the respondents, the participants who are sharing so much of themselves so that we can learn about the world in which we, um, in which we live. We are also strongly committed to preserving data. We are um, a leader in data preservation and in data access 
again, we, we need to always be thinking about that. Given the rate of technological change, how do we maintain our preservation strategy? How do we do that in a way that is efficient? Um, it can easily um, get become very, very expensive. And we, at the same time, we know there are new technologies that we want to be taking, make, taking advantage of to reduce our costs and to make sure that data are preserved um, so that they can actually be used um, in the future. And being used is what access is all about. We are about expanding access, expanding access for our members, expanding access for communities that need to know about the data that we have, um, for making sure that their access is there, not just in terms of can you get to it on the web, but do you know how to use it? Can you understand the data that are there? Our, our rich curation process, the kinds of materials that we produce about the data, allow people to understand the data and access it meaningfully. The training opportunities that we provide through the summer program and other kinds of um, outlets allow people to understand data and analyze it so that they can access it and turn it into a meaningful resource for their research or for their, um, their understanding of the world in which they live. We have a really cool, because we have the best communications team in the world, we have a really cool um, little video on our strategic plan, and we are going to play that for you now. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little video as much as as we did. Yeah. <laughs> we are, you couldn't see, but we were all up dancing. Uh, so I so we're we are actually really excited um, about implementing that strategic plan. <clears throat> um, we we want to talk a little bit about what makes ICPSR unique. We, as we think about moving forward, we also are keenly aware of what are the things that, the things that make ICPSR a success that have made it valuable to its members for, um, for, for years. And we want to keep those things, the things that we're doing right, 
forefront so that we don't lose track of those as we try to do more for the future. Um, over 50,000 people download data from ICPSR every year. What, what is it that they say we ask them? What do they think about, um, about ICPSR um, and our data? And what do they like about us? They like the documentation, the resources that accompany the data, that make the data useful. We all know that people can throw data, a data set up on a website. That doesn't mean that anybody else can make use of it, understand where that data came from, what it actually measures. Our documentation makes your data useful to you. All right, what do we say? They, they, oh, one, one respondent to our survey said, come here, get data. It's been checked for errors and is well marked up so you understand what it is. There's no fishing expedition to find things you don't want. We, uh, we are constantly improving our search so that, we, so that you can find the data that you want efficiently, um, and then you can explore it and get to know it before you download using on our online data analysis resources, which we are also in the process of improving. We have a wide range of helpful resources. It's not just the data. We also have guides for how to prepare your data for data sharing, guides for writing your data management plan when you're writing that proposal. We have all those resources for data stewardship across the data life cycle. Um, and, we, and those are there for you to use. ICPSR is also committed to demonstrating the impact of research data. If you missed, um, Earlier this week, we had a, um, a, one of our webinars was on data citation. There's a great new little YouTube video about data citation. Data citations are incredibly important. They're, so please, if you have not been properly citing data when you write articles, make sure you do so in the future. Why is this important? It's important because people invest a lot in research, and we want to give them credit for doing that, for what, when people share their data, we want to give them credit, so we want to cite data for that reason. We also, data citations also improve, improve, improve the transparency and reproducibility of our research. We all know that it's extremely important to explain to the broader public what it is that social science research is. We're not just making this up. We're not just voicing our opinions. We're telling you something about the data that we've analyzed. In order to do that convincingly, we need to show people where the data came from. It's not just in my back pocket or in my desk drawer. This is something I'm willing to share, and I tell you where I got the data, what it looks like. We do that by, by citing the data that we use when we publish. So we provide that information um, for, for, um, for all of our data. We give you a standard citation when you share data with us. We'll give you a citation so that everybody who uses your data will cite it in the same way. We keep track of those citations and we add them to our data related publications. Um, all of that is there on our study homepage, um, as well as our data downloads, characteristics of users and, and, use, and use at different institutions, which we know is so important to many of the ORs out there. Here we have an example of a great study monitoring the future, which those of you who've been paying attention to the, the recent news about vaping, all of that news about vaping that's been on the, um, on the front page of um, the pa papers recently, that, that those come from monitoring the future studies that we have available here at ICPSR. You can see how, how often monitoring the future this particular um, uh, year this of uh, in the future was downloaded, how many people logged in, how many total users. You can see them for different time periods. That might be useful to the people who create Monitor in the Future, or that might be useful to the funders. That might be useful for people who want to understand how people are thinking about drug use and alcohol use and vaping um, and, um, uh, it going forward. We also have information about who's using our data. In particular, are these students, are these graduates, you know, are they graduate students or undergraduates, are they faculty, are they staff? Um, one of the things that I was really struck by when I first came to ICPSR and was looking at our numbers is how many of our users are undergraduates who are getting to work with real data. They are learning things and discovering new knowledge in their undergraduate classes as they 
learn about how to analyze data. Statistics is so much more fun when you're studying things that you care about and you're looking at things and, and discovering new knowledge. And we're, we love to have those undergraduate it's in here using our data, as well as obviously people who are creating science, new, new social science knowledge that gets published. Not that undergraduates never publish, we love it when they do. <laughs> but, okay. Um, we also have information that's particularly valuable, we know, to our official representatives. You can see how many, um, how many people from your institution are downloading, what kinds of data they're downloading. We have these downloads by member institutions, um, that, which is particularly useful for, your, um, for the institutions themselves. We try to provide all of this to you right from the study homepage. As we said, we are doing a lot at ICPSR these days. We like to think of renovation. We are, we are, we are renewing, we are renovating, and we are doing new things. We are, you know, obviously the core activities including depositing data, disseminating that data, curating the data, providing educational activities. We are continuing these things and we are updating each one of these things. We have a new deposit page. We have a new dissemination page. We are updating, I'm not, uh, we are updating how we do curation to make it um, less tedious for our staff and more useful for our users. We are always talking about new educational activities. We are improving our infrastructure, our technology, which we call Arcanux. Um, we're going to talk about quite a bit about um, in a minute. I'll turn things over to Abe, Abe and Kilsang to do that. We're also, we're not just um, renovating our technology, the physical infrastructure, the technology infrastructure. We're also reorganizing ourselves so that we collaborate, we work well together, um, and that we work as well together across the different parts of our organization as well as we do with you on a daily basis. We are also renewing the things that we've been doing. In the past year, we have renewed um, several of our topical archives, including NACTA, our um, National Institutes of Aging um, funded archive of aging data, HEMCA, which is the Health and Medical Care Archive that has health research data that is supported by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, NACJD, our criminal justice data, which is um, which is supported by the Office of Justice Programs. All three of these have been renewed in the past year so that they can continue to give you the valuable data resources that they've been doing in some cases for over 30 years. Um, we know that these are really important. We're also pursuing new projects, both pro projects that have new data and, new, uh, and other new kinds of resources. These, by the way, are just one example of the incredible swag that ICPSR has. I think there's no question that we have the best swag. And the next time you're at a research conference, make your way over to those booths, make your way to the ICPSR booth. Our staff love to tell you about what we're up to and they will share with you one of these flashing ice cubes. One of the really amazing, actually, when I started putting together our, our cool new projects, I realized we had all of these different projects going on with education data and improving education research. We have a, a newly funded um, early care and education archive um, that is taking over from what was the Research Connections Project um, with support from Health and Human Services. And that will be launched in the next couple months. We're really excited about that. Um, as it transitions from research connections. We've been working with the Mellon Foundation to, um, for, to create a new data infrastructure um, building on what they had done um, a while ago called College and Beyond. This will be College and Beyond 2 will be a new data infrastructure for studying um, higher education and in particular the impact of the liberal arts experience in lots of different higher education um, environment. So we're really excited about that project. We have two projects funded by the Gates Foundation. One is the Measures of Effective Teaching Project, which has new data that's been released this year. We've also been um, getting data from Gates on their Millennium Scholars, the, the, the scholarships that they've been giving to um, high school students to study in college for a couple decades now um, and data on those students and the long run impact of those scholarships um, is, is being archived here for um, more research on 
on the impact of those kinds of interventions on improving um, outcomes for, um, for students in, uh, in the United States. Um, we have a, a collaboration with the American Education Research Association. Um, that collaboration is a long-standing collaboration, but it has two new um, initiatives that we've undertaken this year. Um, one is that we are now hosting the AERA journals, um, not the journals themselves, but their but archives for their data related um, for the for their publication related data. Um, we keep track of the data related publications on our study page, but we're now allowing researchers, having a place for researchers who are publishing in the AERA journals to put the data that's associated with individual articles, again, to foster that transparency and reproducibility with all of the research that takes place. So we have that as part of um, our publication um, related um, archives. We also um, are providing data stewardship support for fellowship recipients that AERA funds as part of its National Science Foundation project to support our um, education um, research, particularly to STEM education. So we're really excited about that. And finally, we have another project, which is a really, this is really cool. It is it is not just about data. It's it's not just about data stewardship. It's a it's a new repository where people can who are doing um, uh, research on education efficacy interventions and education science can pre-register their study. Again, tell the research community about what they're doing before they do it, which doesn't mean that their research strategy won't change. That can be part of what you what you report over time, but you say, this is what I'm planning to do. This allows you, and part allows you to stake a little claim. This is what people know what you're up to. It also says, I'm not just making this up at the end to get the result that I wanted. I have hypotheses. I'm going to do some empirical analysis, and we're going to learn from the empirical analysis about what what's works and what doesn't um, in education. So we're really excited to be hosting this registry, an archive of registries for research on education efficacy. Again, to promote transparency and reproducibility in this particular area um, of, of social science research, but it is part of our general approach to improving um, uh, transparency and reproducibility in social science more generally. We are, as I said, doing a bunch of other things to talk about uh, a bunch of other things to improve our technology. And I'm going to turn it over to Ave and Kilsang um, to talk about that next. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Um, and thank you all for joining us. This is going to be exciting. I, again, my name is Ave. I'm here with Kilsang. Hello. Hello. Hey, Kilsang. And we're going to talk about some of the exciting new technology here at ICPSR. As you can imagine, in 2018, it has been a busy year for us. And we have no signs of slowing down. So in the next few minutes, we'd like to just give you a high-level view of what we have been released and what is coming down the pipeline. I have to thank the tech staff, the, the curation staff, the faculty here, and of course you have been a part of making this all possible. So without any further ado, let's go right into the technology. But first, <laughs> but first, we have some karaoke. I want I know this was part of the description, so we have to add it in, and hopefully we can get some participation. <laughs> this is going to be a little different webinar. I want this to be more interactive. In the oh, karaoke, people are already talking about it. It's going to be great, right? In your chat box, in the question box, box, I would like you to submit some things. But there are some rules that we're going to play. This is not going to be free for karaoke. We have some rules in place. This is ICPSR afterwards. So, Let's do it. Step number one, we recite some song lyrics. I don't know if we want to consider that singing, but uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Step two, you guess the song and the artist. We have some flexibility with the artist because we know there's some new renditions, so just give us the song. Step three, we'll then describe some cool new technology for you. And of course, step four, Everybody wins. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm already seeing some comments in the question box. Yes, it looks like everyone is ready. So let's see if we can start round number one. Kilsan, you want to take this one? Yep. Let's <laughs> go. I've got gadgets and gizmos of plenty. 
I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. You won't feed me, bots? I've got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want the more. <laughs> Right, please submit your guesses yeah. in the questions box. Oh, oh yes. yes, we got one guess. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, they keep coming in. They keep coming in. Oh my gosh. Okay, 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 okay. Is this song of Limerick? <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who guessed it, you're absolutely correct. This is Part of Your World by the Little Mermaid. Oh, Julie Benson. Do we have to get the artist some credit? You know, yes, congratulations, you get all the points. And we can use those points to add up to get some information on ICPSR's technology. So let's use those keywords. Gadgets, gizmos, who's it, what's it, and in the mom. <laughs> so what does that mean exactly? Gadget, gizmos, who's it, what's it, and thing about. Well, the way how we can think about that, that is Archinex for us. So Archinex itself we support an ever-growing body of public and research use data. It is powered by you. Archinex itself is this collaboration and combination of technologies all put together with ICPSR's key audiences in mind. We have a range of data types from GIS, image, numeric, text-based, and we provide things like file-level metadata, of course, all using a customizable and shareable workspace. The system was designed specifically for the audience in mind, like you. So I'm going to let Kinsan talk a little bit about um, some of our new technologies under Archinex, and we'll then do round number two. Cool. All right, let's go. Well, as most of you would know that we released a new website in the February of this year. It was a whole new redesign in a modern tabular and modular layout. Um, all the study variable and serial, uh, serial home pages were redesigned and new search functionality was implemented. However, from February, we haven't been just resting on our laurels and marveling at our great website. We've actually been uh, doing a lot of incremental work that we knew we needed some announcements. We also incorporated feedback from our users and we hopefully are slowly and slowly and building things, more things in such that our uh, new website is a great resource for all. So, what new things uh, have we had? Well, first of all, is that we made it easier to see our documentations. So rather than before, where you actually had to download the PDF files, open it up on your computer, then read it. If it's not the right, the right one you're looking for, then you have to go back and download it again. We've actually made it easier such that you can actually preview the PDF files on our website without having to go through all the rigmarole of having to download it. So that's one win for all you time savers out there. Second thing is, I think is really, really cool, is the URL-based search. So what is URL-based search? Well, what it makes is that most of the resources on our web pages, you can now bookmark and share it. Uh, you all had that same, you know, experience of where you went to a particular website, you saw something interesting, and it says, oh, I'll come back to get, get it later. Then, well, if you don't exactly um, trace your steps perfectly, you can't find it again. So what you can do now is on any of our web pages, all you have to do is copy the URL in your browser. You can bookmark it or send it off to a colleague in an email, and they'll see exactly the same page that uh, you saw, so which will hopefully make it so much easier for all of you to share our resources. The next thing is we've integrated the ICPSR website search into our main search window. So as you can see on the screenshot, we now have a new tab in our screen, uh, in our search screen, where we all search the website. So you have all the searches in one single page. It makes it much more convenient rather than the old method where you actually had to get to a different search engine to search our websites. We now have more data type descriptors. Well, what are data type descriptors? Well, we used to have a, a clunky category called other, where we put things that we didn't know quite how, the, how our old system couldn't kind of deal with. But now with our new Archinex infrastructure, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg that's kind of peeking out now, <laughs> which shows how powerful Archinex is, is that it can now deal with a whole variety of files. So we've now labeled um, GIS files as GIS, Excel files as GIS, I mean, it's just so obvious, but it's such a cool thing, which will show the potential of what our Archinex system can do. 
Um, lastly, when we're actually developing all the tools and resources that are on our website, we actually are very, very careful to make sure that it is accessible to everyone. So we are in the development process, we are thinking about being ADA compliant. So this is very, very important to us, such that all the resources that we produce, even the more complicated tools and resources that we have, we will make it ADA compliant. So shall we go off to? We should go to round number two. We did have a question from mm -hmm. Jennifer. And look, she's asking about citation and, and improvements to that and things with visualization as well. We have additional things coming down the pipeline. To answer your first part of the question, Jennifer, she's asking, are there different models of citing, uh, learning how to cite raw data? So the first part is we've improved how we do citations. Um, on the main ICPSR page, on any study homepage, you will see a button that says how to cite. And that is dynamically generated. And people can click that button and see the citation immediately. As we, as we increase the technology, we would have different ways of citing, but that's down the pipeline. Let's not get ahead of ourselves yeah. quickly, <laughs> but it is coming, something that we are thinking about. And visualization, that's something we've been talking about for at least a year yeah. here at ICPSR, and it is something that we're thinking about. So thanks again for that question, and I hope, I hope you, you stick around for the next round. Right? Let's go. Round number two. Go ahead, David. Yeah, maybe I should take this one. All right, fine. fine, fine, fine. Um, me, 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 me. You guys ready? All right, let's do it. Pop, pop. It's showtime. It's showtime. Guess who's back again? Oh, they don't know? Oh, they don't know. <laughs> I bet they know as soon as we walk in. When Cuban links, designer minks, Inglewood's finest shoes, don't look too hard, might hurt yourself. Known to give the color red the blues. Let's see if anyone knows this one. This one's a little trickier, the first one was easy. This one, let's see it. All right, pop pop, it's showtime. It's showtime. Guess who's back again? Oh, they don't know? Oh, they don't know. Well, it looks like today a different oh, one. Oh, okay. not the biggest. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I got it. <laughs> Scott got it, all right. Oh my goodness, I, good try, good try. Scott definitely got it. 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars. Good guess, guys, good guess. I told you this is not gonna be all giveaways. This is gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge sometimes. So the reason that we did that is there is magic behind what we're doing. ICPSR's My Data is kind of our single sign-in system that gives you access to all our various tools. For a lot of users, this is like magic. They don't have to sign in multiple different ways. And this gives them access to all the different features that ISPSR has regardless of the website. And it's much more than just an authentication system. We add things about protection in this last year that's helping increase the, the, the protection of, of the resources that we have here. It is gonna be our new hub of ICPSR activity. Uh, it's access to the various ICPSR tools from the report manager, to your account information, even the deposit system. And this is just the beginning. When more and more features get released, it's the tiles are gonna be added to this page. And for OR specifically, I have something new and exciting to show you. In that bottom left hand corner, you see that report manager? That's something that's brand new. It's gonna be all your reports that you need in one location. Whether you're a user, an institution level, or even a federation or hub ORs, you get all access to your reports and you have granular control. If you are OR of multiple institutions, you can select which institution that you want straight from that menu. If you want to change the date parameters, or you want to, to isolate certain things, like I only want to show certain types of users, you can generate that straight from this report manager. It's a cool new feature and we think it's something that people are gonna really like. And you can access, access that straight from our My Data page. So, ready for round number three? It's yours. Me? All right, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me see if I can do this a little, a little better, okay. It goes on and on and on and on. All right, let me see, let me see. Strangers waiting up and down the boulevard, their shadows searching in the night. Street lights, people living just to find emotion, so hiding somewhere in the night. 
to the deposit system as well. We're going to make things more efficient. So faster releases for you, the depositor, or even for the user. We will have an integrated deposit bureau. So as things come into our system, not only will people be able to communicate with the curation staff, the staff are able to pull all that information into their own curation space and work without having to even leave their desk, have it work uh, integrated seamlessly. We have a new metadata editor. We're really excited about that. And we're hoping to enhance that even more. And then finally, we have a whole new release system that we're hoping to release by the end of this year. And hopefully, we're going to have some more features that we can talk about later, later at that time. So let's go to round number four. Kilsang, I think you need to take this one. OK. I'll take number one. Are you going to sing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Regrets. I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without extension. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. That was such a good rendition. Thank you. such that it's a little bit more clearer and much easier to deposit to our institutional repositories. And coming soon, our self-publishing platforms will now have user statistics, such Ooh. as downloads and page views. So a oh. lot more um, user statistics to brag about. about your own. <laughs> and to your CV. You put, you put yeah. up the article, the article gets accepted, you put up the data, once the article is published, you can go back and add the citation. Yep. And then when people start downloading it, you can add that to your CV. That's you right. Up. And you can say how many people have seen it and how many people have downloaded it. And if somebody publishes, well, you can add those publications in and, well, grow your brand. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. All right. Uh, let's do, we have, I think, two more rounds. Let's do two more rounds. All right. Um, this one, I think I'll take this one. Because I'm from the Caribbean. Let's see if anyone knows any Caribbean sounds. All right. Let me turn off the, the voice. All right. <laughs> Rise up this morning. Smile with the rising sun. Three little birds pitch by my doorstep. Singing sweet songs. 
of melodies pure and true, saying, this is my message to you. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh that was quick. Yeah. Oh, Three little birds. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 This has been great. This has been great. People got it. People got it. Mm -hmm. This has been awesome. Yeah. This has been great. All right. Um, so three little birds. What does that really mean? Well, three little birds. We have three major projects that are coming up. <laughs> and we're releasing three major projects. In addition to all of the other things that we're doing, we have these three things that we want to touch on. The first is the researcher passport. You've been hearing a little bit about it. It's something that's really interesting. It's a place where we're going to enhance data access and confidentiality protections. It's a space where it's going to have a digital um, identifier and a central community for like a trusted researcher. You can find out so much more about it. This is just a little plug. There's a webinar about it tomorrow. That's tomorrow, Thursday, with uh, Joanna Bretman and myself. Please join us for that one. It is going to be amazing. Next. Our next project is the linkage library. Beyond just data, we, we know there are people in the community that's combining these data sets to create something new and interesting. And we want a space that's allowing them to not only post data, but the linkage code behind that data. And beyond that, we're enhancing it that we're going to have places where they're going to have these conversations around it, commenting back and forth, saying, these are some of the different methodologies I use to do my linkage. And we're building the bigger social science community through this linkage library. I think it's going to be really interesting. Just a small plug again. It's going to be at the webinar tomorrow. Check it out if you have not already registered. And finally, last but not least, definitely not least, -na -na -na. it is going to be our new online analysis system. It has been branded Stats Now. It is coming. You get your stats in a stat. Dun, 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 dun. So, more information about this will be provided at a later time. This is one of our, our secret sources that we're going to be releasing, and it's going to enhance ICPSR's dissemination pages. And once you see on the, on the study pages or a series page, most likely a study page, you can click the button and get access to, to various statistics or even um, manipulate that data in some method straight without having to even download it onto your system. It's going to be a really cool project. And hopefully at the end of this year, we're going to have a little bit more information to share with you all. Awesome. All right. This is the final round. We'll go together. Let's do it. Let's see if we will figure this out. <laughs> I know Maggie, you might want to join us. Well, you know, I, I, I promised them I wouldn't sing. I, I don't think they would have registered if they thought I was singing. But I have to tell you, when you hear this song, the entire the entire ICPSR staff sang along <laughs> uh, at our holiday party. So it's clearly, it's a big hit here. <laughs> it's gonna be great. All right, y'all ready? All right, where it began, I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. Was it a spring? Then spring begins the summer. Who had believed you'd come along? Hands, touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. <laughs> what are you doing? Sweet Caroline. I have no sin. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this has been great. This has been great. All right, let's, have, let's bring it on. All right, touch the world. <laughs> we at ICPSR and the development team are not working in our vacuum, just looking at our own stuff. We actually uh, collaborate with a lot of different um, other institutions and entities. Um, I think we have one real cool uh, collaboration that we want to kind of let you know about is the new uh, project from Google, which is the Google Data Search Project. And it's basically a new search engine which is custom tailored for data discoverability. So uh, our development team had worked to make sure that our collection is one of the uh, premier collections, I think, on the Google Data Search right now. 
Thornton. No, I just, so yeah. I was say we, we worked to make sure that it was, but it was actually, I mean, Google really used the metadata and the structure of metadata that ICPSR uses because our metadata is so good that that was the best way mm -hmm. for them to design their search was to use our data as the model. I think that that's fair to say. I think uh, we are very, very I mean, proud of that yeah. fact. Yeah. So, our, so uh, our data has been easily implemented. Uh, they have been able to index it. So on the Google data search, all our published data is on there with all the wonderful um, curated metadata that we've created also on there. And we're hoping that this uh, helps widen our audience. Not only, you know, it's Google, it's ubiquitous to everywhere and our data is even more prominently on it now yeah so so once again thank you all for all the terrific playing along and the suggestions and the answers to the question i think this was fun yeah, yeah. i think this was fun and and we really could not build this technology without you it is for you and it's by you and it's by us we're really building this to support the whole ecosystem and the community the research community so again we want to thank you for playing and i'll pass it back to maggie as she brings us home yeah, thank you guys so much. This is, it's so fun to come to work here. Um, and so when you come to our website, um, you can think about these guys singing and that will make data discovery and data use more fun. You can also actually come right here to Ann Arbor. This year we're having this data fair. Next summer we will have our ICPSR biennial meeting for our official representatives. Um, uh, October 16th to 18th, come to Ann Arbor. We will be, you can, you can sing along in person. <laughs> you can learn about our data. You can meet us and see our beautiful uh, Paris School building. Um, we, are, we, are, we are excited um, to be hosting that and we look forward to seeing you there. Um, in the meantime, between now and next summer, um, we're gonna be asking a couple things of you. We will be looking for nominations for our council. Um, you saw the pictures uh, early on in one of the slides that our this year's uh, new council members will we'll be will have six council members who are rotating off and we'll be looking for your nomination. So start thinking now about who you would like to see on the ICPSR council. We rely on that council to give us feedback about what our members need, what they want to see in the future. Um, so help us select those by nominating people. We also, every two years, give out two really important awards that, um, that honor our founder, Warren Miller, and one of our longtime official representatives, William Flanagan. Um, and we have awards named for them. We're gonna call for nominations for those two awards in the early spring. The Miller Award is for meritorious service to the social sciences. And the Flanagan Award is for someone who has given distinguished service to ICPSR as an official representative. So think now about who you would like to nominate for those two um, really important awards who we want to um, recognize in our community. Who's, um, um, so we look, we'll be looking for your suggestions. And I think that is a wrap for our presentation. Do we wrap. have any other questions that we haven't addressed? I don't think so. I think we addressed them in, yeah. in our conversation and plus people are just really happy about this. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, our, our, our our questions, we were saying, we're playing Jeopardy. Our questions are full of answers um, to uh, yeah. the karaoke. If there's anything else, we're happy to take those. Um, if not, we'll see you at the next we webinar. We will see you at the next webinar. Don't forget, we will have um, webinars on both Linkage Library and the Researcher Passport in the next day. Yeah. Well, thank and, you. And all. lots more. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very, very much for coming. Much.